Welcome back to Ochakoi for another one on this nice cold chilly winter's day again. Don't you hate the winter? We're miserable. Temperatures are stupidly low and yeah, just all round fun. Um, this one indoors even, I'm, I'm sitting at six degrees so they're all gone to the bottom. They're having their first proper little winter before I start picking the temperature back up again. So huddling away, still doing my little little weekly water change. Um, air's off, ozone's off, just on maintenance mode now. Water stays nice and clear to be fair so hopefully give it a chance to, to recover and settle that down before I hammer it again. Anyway, today's video, I'm going to do a little bit on the ozone unit, uh, ones that we've discussed in the, the previous videos, uh, there it is in full view, <clears throat> and actually a few do's and don'ts, uh, what I've learned over the time of having it, and also how to replace the Corona discharge unit uh, when you need to, when your six months is up, when you've used it, or in my case, if you've burnt it out. So yeah, that's what we're going to be looking at. Um, just a couple of sort of brief observations that I've had over the time of using it. Obviously it's been about six months now since I started using this ozone unit. And I have to say my initial impressions haven't changed. I'm still really impressed with it. Um, I will state at this point, I don't think it's a must have on any, on any pond, if I'm honest. I don't think a lot of things are a must have, um, bar decent biological filtration. Everything else is down to personal preference and what you're wanting to achieve. However, for what I've been wanting to use it for, I have found it absolutely spot on. It's allowed me to push the threshold of the amount of food I'm getting in here to the absolute maximum on a very small volume of water. In the six months, or just short of six months that I have been using it, I have not had any detrimental effects to the fish, as you can see. Everyone in here is good. Um, I've had no parasitical issues in this one at all. I haven't had to treat for anything like that, which is good. And there were a few new additions during that time. So again, big tick in the box for me. Um, but obviously I did start quarantining as well. So hopefully that's had an effect. That big shower down there. I don't know there was a, a comment on my last video about the damage that had. That was caused, and I don't know if you can see this on the camera that well, but over there on that plastic ridge, there is a little lump and it's very sharp. But I need to file down. Well, I have filed a little bit down, but I need to file some more down. When the water, I have it too high, and they feed, they come up and they wallop it, and he proper walloped himself. And I saw instantly about four scales come off, and I knew that was bad. I left him in here for a long time, hoping that it would heal. Um, I put a, bit, a little bit of salt in here to try and ease it out. Not massive amounts, because of the amount of water changes I was doing on it, because of the amount I was feeding, etc. It's hard to keep the salt level up. Um, but I didn't really take any action, and it did get infected. However, that was over a long period of time. Now, I don't know. Obviously, I can't, I can't prove this in any way, shape or form. But I don't know if it's a case that the ozone being on the system actually delayed the infection and how bad that would have got. If I hadn't have had the ozone, I'd ask, would I have lost that fish sooner? Did it buy me the time when I was um, I about what to do? Obviously, I took him out, I treated him, and seemingly I fixed him so you can see when he comes back round on this side even his colour has started to reform even more than when we last looked as you can see there soon he's coming back and a bit of belly further down so long may that continue hopefully so yeah that, that's like I said no adverse effects in the time that I've been using it which is you know I know a lot of people were worried about it I have been injecting straight into the water column through the air diffuser as well the fish have been swimming through it again nothing has reared its head no issues the fish have seemed very happy, very active, um, and the rest of it. So, back to the unit itself, and uh, talking about the other the benefits that I've seen. So, I think the biggest benefit anyone will find is your water clarity. A lot of people are very interested in the water clarity, and why wouldn't you be when you spend hundreds and thousands on some of these fish that you want to view in in great great detail, and you don't want a hazy, misty pond. Nothing wrong with a hazy, misty pond in the sense of the, the health of the fish, but obviously you're looking at your viewing, your viewing clarity. So straight away, even with a couple of days, depending on the size of your pond, you will notice how much stain you had in the water. Now with the amount I was feeding, I had a lot of organic staining, um, so to get that out was really good. Um, and obviously from my point of view, it's dissolved organics that were increasing the appetite which is the main thing I wanted to do. So I've had no parasites, I've had much clearer water, I've had no detrimental effects on the fish, and I've also had uh, to do less water changes in one hit. 
uh, and reduce my frequency. So at one point when I was really trying to hit this food, I was getting to the point where I needed to clean this out every two days. It was really blocking. The, the water was becoming, you could smell it. It had a, it had a very, very nice movement. I looked at the ORP, my RP was in the minus, so it wasn't good. By putting the ozone on, keeping the food, managing to get a little bit more food in and extending my water changes to up to five to seven days depending. But the water changes also weren't two tiers down, over sort of 50%. I was dropping it back to 30% with the occasional bigger one just for my own, my own sanity because I felt like I wasn't doing enough. <clears throat> Obviously, nothing like what I'm doing at the minute. We're in maintenance mode. There's no food going in. The filter doesn't block. The water's not getting awful. So I'm just doing little ones to, to keep it going. Uh, just some don'ts. So what I have done, and this is my own fault. I can't say this is the unit itself. Um, but I did did do something really stupid so I use an air pump on its own to power this separate to the one that I use to power the Nexus um, obviously it's normally plugged in up there but I also use this to clean out my easy pods on the other system and it's not permanently connected so I'm forever disconnecting that and taking it off up the other end or into the tunnel or whatever to use it what I've done is when I put it back I haven't turned the air pump back on on a couple of occasions and the last time I did this I left it the ozone plugged in on its timer with the air not running for about 36 hours and it burnt the unit out and I will show you what that looks like so this is the corona discharge unit that sits inside the unit see here the, the, the sort of like the burning smell I burnt the unit out so it would no longer one you get no power LED to the top and that was it nothing was coming through like I said totally my fault totally my fault um, but you live and learn, don't you? So, like I said, I'm going to show you how to pop this, replace one of these units, because you have to replace these at six-month intervals anyway if you're using it to the full amount, um, and you'll notice when it's, it's stopped working so your water will quite quickly turn back the other way, and that's that's pretty much what I cottoned onto. I didn't see the light out because I didn't really look at it. I started looking at them, and I was like, well, what's my gun my water? My water's getting murky again, the rest of it. So, yeah, that's where we're at. So I'll show you how, how this goes in. It's nice and simple, but I just figure there's probably going to be a few people that are going to be wanting to change it at some point in the, the new season. So I'll pop this up there for you to see. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll snap back in a second. So you've got these two screws on either side, which I have slackened off, this one here and the one on the other side, which you need to undo, which will release off your control unit, which is where the discharge unit actually sits inside. So you take these out. Um, so I've done the other one enough. I haven't done that enough yet. There we go. And then that will release the entire unit itself. And then, all going well. That's how your unit will come out. It's sitting within the body itself, and then you will literally lift this out. It's quite difficult with one hand, but with two hands, nice and easy. And then you will see in the bottom there, you have a plug. You disconnect the cable from the plug, that whole unit will come out, and then you can pop your new one in. Plug the unit back in, slide it back down. You have the little bit of a fiddle for the room, and then you can pop it back together. So that's the other half of the unit. I have got all the cable tied up, so it's got very long cables on them, which actually I think is a real positive. A lot of stuff comes with stupid short cables. You then pop that back in there, pop that back on there, do your two screws back up, Jobs are good. You don't need to release the main body at all. Just make sure when you put it back in here, you you slide the actual discharge unit back into the the port sleeve there, and then jobs are good. Just a couple of other comments on this. So I have seen a little bit of condensation building up in here where the weather changed at the end of the summer as we started getting into the autumn and spring as the weather was dipping down. That's around about the time I did, well, I was going to stop using it anyway, but as I said, I burnt it out. Um, I don't know if that's going to be an issue long term, just noticing it. It hasn't caused me an issue, but just in my mind, if you're having condensation and something like that, that probably can't be a good thing, especially when that's that. But that's going to be temperature related anyway, so it hadn't been a problem throughout the entire summer. It was only as temperature changes. So yeah, like I said, you'll then you'll pop your, your discharge, try and do this with one hand. You'll pop that back into there. Oh. So 
So that goes back into the court sleeve and then you can screw it all back up. So there it is, all back together. Two screws put back in, job done. Like I said, really simple. Probably doesn't make it look very really simple when I'm doing it with one hand, but trust me, it is. It's a two minute job, tops. Nothing daunting, nothing overwhelming there at all. Obviously, make sure it's not plugged into the mains while you're doing it, uh, safely at all times. Undo those two screws, pop out the unit, undo the cable, plug the new one in, pop it back in, screws in, jobs are good. In. So for me personally, I'm going to keep using the Ozone. I'm finding it useful, I'm enjoying what I'm getting out of it, I see the benefits. Now, like I said before, it is an absolute must have. It depends on what you're trying to do. I'm finding it very useful when I'm trying to chuck a lot of food in this grow on. Um, I think as well, what I'd also ideally like to do, I'd like to have one on my, grow, uh, on my quarantine and hospital tank. I think that would be very useful. Uh, obviously, bring, from a perspective of bringing in new fish, then you can you can do away with any parasites that come in with hopefully any, any nasties and keep everything fairly sterile um, and then as well obviously anything that's trying to heal keeping the water nice and clean so it's again not an issue that you're going to bring up again just when you're looking at you know killing bacteria killing parasites I have to make it clear that when you're doing this what you're doing is you're attempting to sterilize the water obviously in the environments that we're in we are not going to sterilise our water because it is an ecosystem and that's what we were referencing in the previous video with the ORP you stay out of the levels where sterilisation sits at so there's nothing in the water, you're stripping it back of everything um, what the ozone does do as well if you have a look around, again, especially from the marine space it can, it can take out some of the, the metals that are in the water so things like copper, etc uh, can make your water clean from that so if you do have tap water that's coming through um, you don't, you know, some people, or not, 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 not a lot of people use an RO system, um, but you can essentially, you can get not the same results, but you can take a lot of the, of the stuff out of it in terms of what you've got there. So uh, from my point of view, as a conclusion to all this, there's plenty of benefits. Too many, I think, to ignore, not even give a try. That said, you know, it's each to their own. You try what works for you. Um, if you find you've got you know, a system that you want to chuck a lot of food in, then I definitely would definitely give it a consideration. Or if you've got a pond that you do have some, some issues with in terms of parasites, bacteria, etc., you can do it, pop it on the bottom. It's fine to run with salt. I've used salt in conjunction with it. So as I said, the healing, it doesn't cause you an issue at all. No problems there. Um, and just again, price point, when you look at that unit, at the £125 it's currently on sale for, I really don't think you can beat it. You, you know, I want to do some testing whether you can use it with or without an ozone, you know, uh, sorry, without, with or without a UV unit. Do you need both? Um, having both, is that a good thing? Do you get sort of the next level and in, in keeping on top of your parasites and algae and bacteria, etc.? Um, or can you just run off an ozone and do away the UV because it is cheaper to run? So lots of interesting things to think about out of it. Like I said, I'll repeat again, just can't stress this enough. It isn't a must-have for everyone's situation. Um, these units, this little unit, only produces a small amount. So what is good is I don't think anyone is in danger on these size tubs and upwards into full-grown ponds of overdosing their fish, of overdosing the system and actually stripping it back to sterility. Um, I think if you stuck it on a, on a fish tank, yes, you definitely would have to, have to watch that um, and really consider how much dosage is going in. But other than that, I think we're pretty safe on the pond front. Like I said before, I think ideally I'd like to put it in a separate chamber. Not that I've seen any issues, um, but again, just for that peace of mind. But you have to remember, in the ozone, as it comes out, it will bind itself to microorganisms. The fish are not microorganisms, so it shouldn't be binding itself to anything attached to the actual fish's body itself, unless obviously there are small parasites. But again, that's going to be much harder when they're, they're attached to the fish. Uh, one last thought on just on the ORP meter that I bought. I would say don't buy those that cheap Chinese one that I got off eBay. It isn't very good. It really fluctuates with the temperature. Now, for anyone who's looked into the ORP stuff, ORP can really fluctuate with temps um, and be quite hard to read. It's quite a finicky thing to read anyway. It can jump around a little bit. So if you stick your ORP meter in and you find that one day you've, you're 100 higher than you were a couple of hours ago, don't necessarily be overly surprised. 
the RP meter I've got, it started off quite well, but it didn't last very long before it started really fluctuating. And I think that's down to the quality of the probes in it, because it does use the pH probe along with another probe to take its reading. The, the unit itself is good for salt, it reads the salt level really well. In fact, every time I've dosed up my salt knowing what I want in there, it comes back as perfect. Um, but the flip side of that being the RP isn't great. And the TDS one, I, I, I think, is probably on the same, same remit. So I'm going to get a new meter. I've got one on order, so I'll give you guys an unboxing and a run through of that. Um, it's a slightly, well, it's more expensive. It's a bit of a beefier unit, um, but hopefully it'll give me the, the, the stability that I'm looking for when I'm measuring this stuff. So, yeah. Hope you found it useful, guys. Um, it is just a, a talking at you video whilst looking at the fish and the show are doing well. Um, but yeah, like I said, hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all the support again, and I'll catch you all soon. Take care. Bye bye. Just one last thing I wanted to mention. Don't forget guys, I am doing a giveaway on my 750 subscribers when I achieve that of this exact unit you see in front of you. It'll be a brand new one, boxed as supplied by Ecofiltration, um, ready for one lucky subscriber to get their hands on in time, hopefully for next season. So yeah, as I said, if you don't, do give us a subscribe and I'll put up details of how to enter when we get there. Cheers.